Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. Now today we are actually going to talk about Dua Lipa. Um, she's an international pop star that is both from the UK and from Kosovo and she has a really interesting migration background. Now of course she is a global phenomenon, a globally famous pop star, but the reason why I want to talk about her today is because she also has a really interesting migration and particularly forced migration story from at least um, her parents and her early youth days. Well, I want to talk about her because while we all know who she is and she has a very interesting background, her story is not uncommon. Um, we know that there are more forced migrants in the world today than any other time in history that we've also seen since World War II. Um, we know that there are a lot of interesting dynamics with regard to return migration, with regard to integration of migrants, with regard to um, return and reintegration of migrants, and uh, how people also live transnational lives. So I want to look at Dua Lipa's story today more as a representation of a lot of the migration experiences that we're seeing in the world today, and you can see it actually through the eyes of an international pop star. So let's jump right in and talk about her life and her parents' life. Her name is actually an Albanian name that means love. Dua Lipa's mother, Anessa, was actually born to a Kosovar father and a Bosnian mother. So in the 1990s, there were the Balkan Wars. War actually first came to Bosnia, where Anessa's mother lived, and then to Kosovo, where by now, she was living with her fiance, Dakijin Lipa. In 1992, both Dakijin and Anessa actually sought refuge in London while their parents stayed behind in Kosovo and in Bosnia. At this time, Bosnian refugees, mostly Muslim Bosniaks, began first arriving in Britain in 1992 as the Balkans degenerated into inter-ethnic genocide, which eventually claimed the lives of around a quarter of a million people. So most were settled in London, the East Midlands, or Leeds, in well-funded government programs designed to coordinate um, with local authorities and different responses. The UK actually had quite substantial programs at that time to help the refugees that were coming in from the Balkan region. So fast forward a few years and Dakajin's father, so Dua Lipa's grandfather, actually died in 1992, um, the year that the Kosovo War ended. But um, the borders were closed at that time, so no one in the family was actually able to go back uh, to see him and for the funeral because of the situation with border closures. And again, that's something that we often see today, that in conflict settings, there is often an inability to return, even when there are deaths in the family and other things like that, that can often be very, very difficult for the families. Dua Lipa herself, though, was born in Northwest London in 1995. Um, she has been quoted as saying that I've seen my parents work every day of my life. In Kosovo, actually, her father was training to be a dentist and her mother to be a lawyer. But of course, their sudden exit um, and their sudden arrival in London, you know, really changed all of this. And for a long time, her parents had to work as um, waiters and waitresses and cafes and bars and in the evening her father um, took business courses and her mother retrained in travel and tourism. Dua Lipa has actually said that while she was going to school her parents were also going to school and this is another thing that we often see of immigrants especially you know forced migrants to new places often they're not able to just pick up where they left off they're often forced to kind of do jobs below their, um, below their educational level and often need to completely retrain to be able to work in those countries. And that's something that we absolutely saw in this case. If we fast forward several years uh, with the war over and uh, Kosovo rebuilding, Dua Lipa, um, then 11 years old, 
moved back to Kosovo um, because her parents decided to move back to Kosovo where you know her father had already graduated from his studies and had been offered a job back in the Kosovo capital of Pristina. So actually Dua Lipa had not been born in Kosovo, she had not grown up there, all she had actually known from a physical perspective was the UK and then was moving to uh, Kosovo at the age of 11. And again, this is something that we sometimes see also of what we call second generation um, or, or second generation migrants. So those are the children of migrants. So Dua Lipa herself was not a migrant. Her parents were migrants. She was born in the UK, but then she was actually moving to Kosovo, a place that she had actually never been before. So of course there can be all kinds of difficulties with um, integration in that country. I can't really call it reintegration. Reintegration would be with regard to the return of her parents who previously had also lived in that area, but she hadn't. So at first she found it difficult to acclimatize and get used to her new school life. Again, something that is very common that we see in similar situations. You know, she really felt like she came from two places, both London in the UK and Kosovo. And this, this kind of dual belonging is often also called, um, you know, transnational belonging or, um, or dual belongings or feeling like, you know, someone is coming from two different places at once. Her father was actually really musical and very much engaged in the music scene in Kosovo. Um, so while living in Kosovo, she was very much exposed to all different kinds of music. And this really influenced her to consider a career in music. So in order to pursue her career, um, she actually persuaded her parents to allow her to move back to London to live with friends of her parents. Her parents stayed behind in Kosovo as they now had good jobs and her younger siblings were comfortable in their schools in Pristina. During this time, now back in the UK, she attended theater school on the weekends. And as she grew older, she started a fashion blog. She tried her hand at modeling and at acting. She was also networking a lot at this period and she was persistently pushing anyone in the music industry to listen to her demos. Luckily, eventually the manager of the famous singer Lana Del Rey saw her talent and signed her. So this was the start of her professional music career. Now, if we come back to the migration situation, Dua Lipa has often commented on the current migration situation in the UK. She's also really been most concerned about the UK's immigration policy post-Brexit. She has said before that had these po current policies existed in the 90s, um, she thinks it would have stopped um, her parents from being able to flee Kosovo at the time for the UK. She's previously said that, quote, um, it upsets me that probably some of my, the younger generations of refugees don't really have the same opportunities that was given because of the fortunate or unfortunate fact that my parents moved to London and I was born here and able to live my dream and do something on a global scale. So she has been increasingly concerned and also vocal about the current immigration policy in the UK. And she, she knows and she has recognized that the current situation would not have allowed her and her parents the opportunities that she had back in the 90s. She's actually also created a foundation in Kosovo where that it, it was meant to raise funds for people um, in Kosovo experiencing financial difficulties. And she and her father have collaborated, um, for example, on a music festival um, that was created to help um, bring money also into the foundation. So it's very clear that Dua Lipa's creative talent and life experiences have been a influenced or heavily influenced by her migration background. She's already achieved great success in the mu music industry and has been recognized by winning, you know, multiple awards around the world, including the 2021 Brit Award for Best Female Solo Artist. And, you know, she she's made sure to give back over time to people who are also less fortunate than her. And I'm sure that we all look forward to, you know, following her career and seeing what else comes out of her career. She's a very talented person. But I think what's important to also see here is that her story is not the only story like this one. Of course, she's extremely talented and has risen to global fame, 
but you know the story of her parents fleeing of them returning of her having to acclimate to a situation that she was not very familiar with having a lot of mobility in her background um, is not one that is unique. So I think it's really nice to have a look at her own story to recognize that there are a lot of other people in the world today that have similar stories. Now, if you found this video helpful and you liked it, of course, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week on different migration issues. And I definitely hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.